How to create a bass hook for a song. I guess that that's today's video. Are you ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? Welcome, I'm in the kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell because whenever I upload a new video, You'll be kept in the loop and eh, you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about Discord and Patreon. I'll tell you about this month's challenge. What is a hook and why is it important? A hook is there to identify the song to the listener. So there's something that is recognizable to the audience that can be clarified as a hook. And why is it important to create something like that in your music? Well, for one, they create on your ambiguity in your musical workflow. So that when you come up with tracks and you're not so sure what to make, you'll always try to look for a hook line. So every track is at least going to have that same sort of incentive. And it worked for me because otherwise I'll be jamming and just making whatever. So it's cool to just like look for a hook line, something that people can latch onto, hook. That's why it's called a hook. Now there are multiple hooks. You got lyrical hooks. Whoa, halfway there. <laughs> Living on a prayer. Smells like teen spirit. <laughs> Musical hooks with synthesizers. Think of Pony by Genuine. <laughs> Instantly when that plays, you know that's a hook. Eurythmics, Sweet Dreams. Deepesh Mode, I Just Can't Get Enough. The Police, Every Breath You Take. Phil Collins, In The Air Tonight. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta all hooks. Now that I've mentioned all these tracks, I know for a fact you're thinking about it. Which brings me to this month's challenge. Create a track with a bass hook. Now, why did I come up with this topic to make a bass hook? I mean, hooks can be anything. But the thing is, when you work in a doorless, uh, environment what you would want is not too many synths to do different things i can't imagine that if you're starting out in the dollars realm or you're working uh, and you've got this one synth that you're really really rely on that's your go-to synth that's the one that's waiting for you at the pearly gates it wouldn't it be nice to just like make a hook line with that synth and since we all love bass bass forever i thought you know what let's make and create something with a bass sound. So we're going to create a bass line that can double up as a hook. If you create a cool dance track, you only need one ingredient. So what we're going to do is make a lead and a bass out of the same sound and create a bass hook. And it works all the time. The only thing you need to memorize is one chord, play different things within that same chord. It's not going to be hard. I'm going to show you how. Sounds cool, right? Let's go, let's go do it now. All right, so, okay, this is basically what is going to happen today. I've got like um, simple drums, rave drums. I'm playing the beat slower. In the last weeks, I have been playing on 135. However, I'm going to go back to, what is it, 128. I see 128 here on my multi-clock. Hey, and that's a cool uh, way to introduce the rest of the band. In the case, I have got the Octatrack Mark II. There's an MPC-1 sitting right here. Those two are connected via MIDI, right? So the both of them are playing um, together. So if I will start here, this will run. You can see that, right? So stop. So there's a start-stop command that goes both ways. I'm going to start with some drums. The drums are pretty simple, yeah? So if I was to play the beats that I have, um, I'll start from multi-clock, by the way. So I will explain what, what everything is. So what you're hearing now is drums coming from the Octatrack Mark II. And I've set it in such a way that the drums are gonna come from here. So I've got like the eight tracks dedicated to my drums. So it's a very ravey kind of vibe. So very loud, very in your face type drums because I'm not so much using top loops for this i'm just using drums now if you have fat drums like this or maybe your setup is not as extensive as mine you would like to have this one drum computer and this one synth to just do something so you will uh, sooner or later wind up in a uh, um, hookville you need to just find a hook for it now uh, explaining quick fast the rest of the um, setup is the mpc1 here is taking care of my midi note information so uh, the subsequent 
and the Minitar are both being controlled from the MPC-1. And then there's a view sequence bits that I have as well. As you can see an OB6 sitting here. That's only there for cosmetics today. Um, the setup between the Minitar and the subsequent, people have been asking me, why are you using two synthesizers that are so bass oriented? Well, um, they're both MOOCs, so I think they live in the same street, probably in the same house, which means that that extra oscillator that I don't have um, on the subsequent 37, uh, not that you need an extra oscillator, it's got two oscillators, but the extra oscillator that I sometimes would need in order for my harmonics to work out, um, this is the mini I can just like hide it underneath um, the uh, subsequent 37. And this one is a paraphonic synthesizer, which means that you can play those um, oscillators separately from each other, which means you can play a lead and a bass line of the same thing, which is cool, it uses the same filter, all good, nice and dandy. At the same time, the Minitar only has three octaves, so it's very low, uh, and I'll stick it underneath and then they both do a song and dance. It's very, very pleasing. So um, you have to always watch out that they don't clash, uh, but that's some probably something for another video. Now let's move inside of the case. I've got, like I said, the Octatrack Mark II that's handling drums. Um, I've got this as a dedicated drum computer. I think it sounds well. It has got that old school vibe to it and the step programming reminds me some sort of the 909 drum computer which I really love. I've, I own one and I use it occasionally but to get that same sort of workflow going I love the, um, uh, the MK2 for that pretty much. Now, then there's the MPC-1 that takes MIDI information, as I said. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff wired to it now. It's only the subsequent and the Minitar that are get, getting controlled by it. Um, and then I use a four sequences, yeah, one row of four for one song. I've got an A pattern and a B pattern. This basically the first one is going to be the ostinato one. And the second one is where the musical information starts to come, so I can do a little bit of a, of a jump in the chords if I wanted to. And then the third and the fourth one this is the same as, the, as, the, as the, the, the first and the second, only there's no note information. So I get to play whatever I want. So for this example today, I'm using an empty pattern. Well, it's still sending out a MIDI to the... Um, uh, to the MK2 here. Uh, and then there's a 1010 black box on which I've got samples. And the 1010 black box is connected to this MIDI fighter. So if I hit one MIDI fighter, one of the um, uh, uh, cells is going to play, much like Ableton. <coughs> but you know, uh, for this uh, today's um, example, we're not going to get into that. Stop all the clips that I play. Um, by the way, didn't even connect it. So I can play whatever I want. You'll not hear anything. Now, the only thing you need to understand is you need to understand one chord. If you memorize one chord, then this will work. Let's say we're going to go for a C minor chord. The only notes you need to memorize are. And the thing is, you'll play something with the bottom note. For example, Watch my fingers. One, two, three, and up to one, two, three. We're always going to end up there. So, this is going to be our bottom sort of like region of the same sequence. Yeah? Because we're going to have a song and dance with. And you're going to see how if we I morph those two things together, it'll become a hook that's easily recognizable and if you play your filth as well, will stand out. Now let's see if we can record something like that. Take some of the drums out because... Okay, snare, where's the snare? Snare was on four. Let's keep it like that. Follow this uh, line here. Three. Got to record it straight in, yeah? So I'll go here. So oh, nice, I've recorded it now, yeah? Now I'm going to play something extra with it. Wouldn't it be nice that if I, um, if I want to branch this out? Nice. Now listen to this. Let's 
squeeze right in. Huh. Now, you see, it starts to become something already. Bam, boom, boom. Okay, I got it. Nice, I'll figure. Take out the drums. There you go. This could be a hook, right? You can do whatever you would like to it. Now, to morph this away, I usually go in, filter it down a little bit. And what I'm thinking is you would like to um, have this thing come out of the darkness because the higher notes are going to be more audible first. So when you lower the filter, you don't hear the low notes, you hear? Which means that if you're gonna to go to a different synthesizer, say for instance, I will go for the sub. MIDI channel is nine, I know that. Okay, open it up. to join these two together. And you're gonna see how this is going to work. Record it in. Ah, I'm liking that. Okay, now listen to what happens when I'm going to open up this filter because this is a theme in itself. Bow, bow, hats. I'm gonna go back to the Minotaur. Instantly, it's like, okay, now, is it simple? Yes, it's very simple, but it doesn't need to be complicated because most hooks are not complicated. I opted to go with a chord structure that goes simple, and then go back up. So I'm always going to the same uh, destination, and then this will be the second harmonic that will fit on top of that so and i love playing monophonic bass lines because then you have to just like figure out what the next note is right so i'm using two synths for that obviously if i'm playing paraphonically with this one i can even add more notes to it but i don't think that that's going to be today's video this is one way of playing that hook line now can we do something else let's go to a different um sequence and do that stuff all over again so when go here what does it play nothing take the snare out okay Go back in, see where we are, Minotaur, sub, so that's the Minotaur. You can hear the difference between those two. Okay, same thing. I'll start with the Minotaur and I'll play uh, something which I don't even know what, and I'll play high notes with the subsequent, see if that works. So we're gonna go in like maybe. One, two, three, go. Uh. Uh. 
Yep, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. Short the nose. That was just the baseline, right? So you need something to have a counter, sort of like call and response thing to it. Like, this is obviously going to go wrong, but who cares? Yeah, I'm digging up. Bam, bam, And the trick is, I will keep it as simple as I can because if I'm working my filters and I'm working effects, because now we're not so much sound designing, we're just playing notes, it means that at some point you can just like add more lush reverb to it and build it up and make it bigger. And you've got this one bass line that consists of two different notes. So it actually is like a lead line on top of a bass line because if you're listening to them separately, let me just play it out. So maybe. If you were to start your track with this, maybe this one needs to go up a little bit. So I'm going to transpose this. Now I think it's a little bit on the low side. So there we go, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this now is harmonizing. Longer notes, a little bit of glide. Yep, there you go. Nice, right symbol. Two, three, go. All right, cool. like it, you know what I mean? And then go back down, put it right out because the right's always in your face. One, two, three, fill it down. This stuff is easy to do live as well. I've done it before. You play one, you play something over the top. It doesn't need to be as maybe um, advanced if you don't know how to play. I mean, I didn't really play any rocket science bits here, but at the same time, I understand that if you if you're not if you don't know what to play, it, it looks uh, complicated. But you can find your own sort of routine that works. And it feels cool. It feels cool to do. And then get the harmony going. You can even just go an octave up and play something else. In the end of the day, if you place it well and you play it rhythm rhythmically, which is also something I would love to say, play rhythmical stuff because that is always going to help you out with uh, hook lines. You know, uh, Sweet Dreams is It has a rhythm to it, which means it's embedded in your brain. 
the low notes play, but are not as audible as the high notes. You know, and then another hook line is sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I? It, it, it works. But the two things together in canon almost do two different things, right? Genuine, same thing. When you listen to Pony, ride it, my pony, uh, my saddle, uh, wait. Wow, ka, wow, wow. One thing is on the offbeat, one thing is on the onbeat. And those are tricks that you can use on your track as well. When it's a radio track, most of the time those hook lines are being there um, to just constantly reel you in. So every eight bars, a new hook line will be there. Commercials work the same way, actually. When you're listening to commercials, they're only there to just like leave an imprint there so that once they're gone, it leaves you wanting to either hear it again or uh, do something as a call to action most of the time. Now, our call to action is, can we get you to dance? It is that simple. Can we make sure you're moving your butt to the beat? Simple. So when you are making something like this, Stop. Well, I'm actually making sure that the busyness of the notes is in the back of the groove. Well, uh, uh. So constantly when you're dancing, you think like, it's nice, right? So you're dancing one, two, three, four. Uh. It gives you an incentive to just like move around. And that is what you would want. That's what you like to invoke. Same with, this, with the other bass line that obviously I don't know how it went. Let's listen to this. Very sparse. If I wanted to um, adjust it in a way that it sounds a little bit more sophisticated, I'll probably go in and change the rhythmical, um, change the rhythmics of the second part. So I'll nudge it. See if this works. Goes on. Hang on a second. Ah, there you go. Nice. Let's put that back. And I'll probably go in and do that with the second note. Yes, so it goes like. Nice. Very melodic techno, by the way. So go in and do it like this. Same going we're gonna do with it. Uh, uh, two, three, go. Uh, 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 of course. No, 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 no. Going to play some lead notes in there. I have created within my hook line a infinite loop because the leading notes that I just played give away what chord I'm going to jump into. So listening to this in solo, taking all the drums out. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. So you go up. Because uh, uh. if you're This goes to that, and then... Like that. So easy peasy. I hope that this is somewhat clear. Um, you can try out with playing one note, two notes, three notes, you know, and just build it up. It doesn't need to be finished fast. This is a hook line. It means a lot of people are going to listen to it for a long time. And it took me a while, but obviously I've been doing this for a while as well. So I can come up with hook lines that, you know, they tend to just like feel more comfortable the longer you leave them on. Um, a basic rule of thumb is if you play a hook line and you can leave it on for five minutes and you're doing something else and it's not starting to bug you, then you find a, a great one. If it's on for an hour and it's still not bugging you, 
you've got a great one. You know, good tracks with good hook lines can be on in the background and nobody would notice them. Tracks with bad hook lines are annoying. They'll, they'll, they'll chew at your ear when you're talking to somebody, you're like, ah, turn that down, you know? So they're um, evasive, they're in your face. So what you would like to do is see if you can find some musical sort of like way of hiding stuff in the background. So yeah, like maybe so. Obviously I got my Then I have to adjust my friend over there. Okay, let's do it like this. I'll just cut out the notes. Hey, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, yes. let's do it. Uh, Nice. Did you notice that I've played it straight in and no mistakes? That's the first. Ah, nice one. So, how much fun is that? It's easy, right? I mean, it's easy once you know what you're looking for, but that's always the case. If you don't know what you're looking for, well, everything is going to be hard. Now, um, I have stressed myself into taking this a step further, which is what I do on analogcourses.com. That's where we get into why do we choose the sound that we choose? How does this work? How do you create those sounds? Because I do believe that within dance music, you would have to keep stuff simple. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't make it too complicated. So wouldn't it be nice to have this one since I do different things? If you're working with a mini tower, then obviously you only have three octaves, but also then it works. So bass lines do not always have to be in the lower region of the frequency range or the lower section of your keyboard. You can do whatever you want with it. Now here a lot of people think and say like, yeah, well, you know what? I've got, um, uh, I've got a Typhon or I'm working with a, with a Mi Log XD try and just do it that way just make sure that you go about it a little bit old school maybe think of it in a monophonic kind of way you know what i mean so um, don't be playing too many notes if that's not possible keep it very simple because the easier it is and the less notes are being played the easier the more recognizable it's going to be to the end user which is i think a very important thing if you're making hooks right think of hard style versus jazz you know hard style a lot of people don't like it it's very sparse it's wow 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 but it does the trick and everybody knows exactly when stuff is going to happen as opposed to a jazz concert where you need to be a, a little bit on the up and up to know what is what and you know so i'm not saying one is better than the other i'm just saying it depends on what your preference is but if you want to make it simple and you want, to, want your music to be accessible to a larger amount of people less notes is one trick to help you out now thanks for watching if you made it this far into the video mm, are you a superstar yes or no i bet yes thank you for watching okay now discord and patreon that's why we do all the challenges that's why we do all the congregating that's why we talk about this stuff we just get together it's a nice cool and fast growing community and i'm going to try a challenge out there again i want you to if you come up in patreon and migrate through to discord where all the magic happens you are now being asked for this September challenge to make a track and make one baseline hook in there. It needs to be pronounced. And sorry to say, you cannot, I state again, cannot use a Zoxbox, a 303, a TBO3, a TD3, anything to do with 303 as it 
No, because that thing is a hook line in itself already. That would mean it's easy. Now, I will think of something that you can win. Probably tickets maybe for ADE if you're ever going to be in Holland. Uh, for the people that are in Holland, uh, ADE tickets for that event that we're doing, doing a kitchen club at the Crane. More on that later. Now, um, yeah, so that, that's a prize. So make a track or make a pattern maybe. Maybe, well, let's make it three minutes long, yeah? And create a hook in the track. It's going to be not the easiest of assignments, but then again, don't overthink it. You know what I mean? Now, uh, music you'll find on Bandcamp. There's a lot of exclusive bits and bobs on there as well. Um, and I guess that this is it for today's video. Now, thank you for watching. I guess I'll catch you next week. You know where. Uh, here on another video. I'm in a little kitchen. Thanks for watching. Peace. <laughs>